Hey guys, Paperbird here. I just wanted to drop in for a second and talk about Harry Matthews. I just read the news that he had passed away. He was 86 years old in Key West, Florida. And Harry Matthews is a writer I think about here every now and then. Uh, and I started just to get flashbacks. So I want to kind of put down some thoughts about him. What I remember, you know, I don't really remember the details of the stories themselves of these novels, but what I really remember about Matthews is his inventive spirit in his prose, his zaniness and just the mad creativity that he would bring to the line. His prose has always had this kind of joyous lightheartedness and almost like a slapstick type feel. And, you know, I think he might be considered like a writer's writer and kind of vaulted into this stratospheric level of high literariness. But really, the way he writes is so... It's so almost lighthearted and disposable, despite having been created with really advanced techniques, that uh, it, it just seems the opposite. This is a writer who I think early on was influenced by Raymond Roussel, and Roussel's use of his own logic in order to tell a story, which really goes against the whole paradigm of standard storytelling. And he just took it, he just kind of went with it. You know, I think the, um, the book here, Convergence, which was his first novel, is really, you know, the next best thing to reading a modern day Raymond Roussel book. I remember something about a golden ads, A-D-Z-E, like a type of tool. This is one of the best titles ever. Toluth. The only thing I remember about this book is that Toluth is the sound that a boot makes when it's pulled out from a bunch of mud. Toluth? This book was, uh, if I remember, this book was a, an epistolary book between... Um, yeah, it's between two characters, I think one of them might have been an Asian. The thing about reading his work is more like when you're in his, when you're in his sentences, he makes these jumps that are just from one creative place to another that are so unexpected and seems to be based on some other type of logic because you can't really predict the phrasing that he's going to use. And so it's always a shock. It's a constant, like, scintillating feeling reading his language. For anyone who has color synesthesia as well, it's just a extremely eye-popping, colorful experience to read his prose. It's kind of hard to think of an American analog that Harry Matthews has. I think he might have been friends with um, Joseph McElroy, now that I think about it. But, you know, maybe you can kind of take the idea of uh, the zaniest aspects of George Saunders and Donald Antrim and Mark Lehner and Pinchon and take out the whole Freytax triangle of story and just amplify all that by, by 10. And then you might get what Harry Matthews is on the page. Uh, but I kind of doubt that any of those writers uh, would have call themselves have, as being influenced by Harry Matthews. I think Harry Matthews had more of an influence maybe overseas in Europe and France than in America. He might be more well known for being, for the longest time, the only American in the Ulipo. And also, he seemed to be the biggest proponent of Ulipo, the marketeer or grand ambassador of the movement and I remember when he put this book out this book is such a great basically like a dictionary or encyclopedia of all their various techniques the the writers the history it's invaluable I think if you're a writer I think this is one of those essential uh, books to have by your side as you're writing especially when you kind of get blocked up you know you can kind of randomly pick some strategy and start to compose in that way, you know? I mean, the idea with Ulipo is that, you know, you exert or you enforce some sort of constraint and then are able to generate, you know, creative text uh, and work that you otherwise couldn't have without that constraint. And this goes into all different types of constraints and formulas. There's other works of his that I've heard about, but I haven't gotten around to reading, which now I kind of want to. I mean, it's a different type of entertainment, you know. It tickles a really specific, like, literary organ, I guess, inside. And, um, but yeah, it's like, no one else can really do it, you know, the way Harry Matthews did. And he's going to be missed. Rest in peace, Harry Matthews.